way down in each of land. Let my people go. Go down Moses, way down in Egypt land, and tell O Pharaoh, and tell O Pharaoh, let my people go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, so I, I wanted to say giving thanks to God. Amen. To the, the, the children of God, the people of God. Thankful for the coming of Prophet William Saunders Crowley. Amen. Thankful for all of our leaders and our leaders today, Chief Rabbi Philip Eugene McNeil's grandfather Abraham. Amen. Thankful for Sister Elder Alexis Strong. Amen. Assistant to the local pastor here. Uh, to all of you sons and daughters of the God of Abraham and armor bearers for grandfather Abraham. All hell. All hell. All is hell. well with thee. All is well. So well with thee. All is well. Amen. Happy to be back. Thankful that I was able to go up to Canyon Land. Amen. And there's so much to share. Things come to us throughout the service. More things come to our mind from this past week. And in the opening address of the 57 to 84 Passover, our leader said of the COVID-19 years, God had turned the faucet off on this world. He said God had turned the faucet off. And then he went on about where we are at that moment of having in-person Seder night service. The high priest petitioned the Almighty saying, Lord, turn the faucet back on. Yes, sir. That's what he said. Yes, so my text for this message is, for there is hope of a tree if it be cut down that it sp will sprout again and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water, it will bud and bring forth bows like a plant. Amen. Job chapter 14, verse 7 through 9. I thank Deacon Charles Reddy for reading this text. The theme is when the faucet is off. When the faucet is off. Can we all understand? I believe we can all understand that for three years, Things were very different. Maybe it felt like five years, but I guess the records will more say that from 2020 through 2022, we didn't have the necessary human connections that Rabbi Henry Brent spoke about. But I won't tarry long on that aspect of the faucet being turned off. See, I'm walking right into your life and saying it could have been 50 years ago for you. Maybe it could have been 20 years ago for you or 10 years ago or maybe last month when you experienced a drought so bad that you had to put a budget on oxygen. When a faucet is really off, even when you turn the knob or push on the pump, or nowadays, when you wave your hands yeah. under the motion sensor of these modern faucets, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing flows from within the faucet. Mm -hmm. That's when it's really a shutdown on the water supply. Yes, a definite drought is taking place in your life when the faucet is turned off. Mm -hmm. Now, I know about the financial drought. I grew up as a kid seeing my mother navigate through those types of droughts. Some droughts are agricultural, experiencing that in Africa recently or right now. No rain, no crops, no water to cook with, 
and no help for other needs that rain took care of. There was a three-year drought back in the book of Samuel. Listen to 2 Samuel chapter 1 and 20, verse 1. Then there was a famine in the days of David three years, year after year, and David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord answered, it is for Saul and for his bloody house because he slew the Gibeonites. So see, God commanded the faucet being shut off in the time of prophet Samuel. So here the drought is linked there to disobedience of God. And the pandemic of our age is linked by theologians to the evil and sin of today. I have a question. Is there some benefit to hard times? An article in the University of Wisconsin Health publication from April of 2020 titled the surprising benefit of going through difficult times said this uh, research has found that up to 70% of people experience positive psychological growth from difficult times, such as a deeper sense of self and purpose, a greater appreciation for life and loved ones, and an increased capacity for altruism empathy, and desire to act for greater good. Now, I, I personally agree that when I've been through something and been blessed to come out of it, or in, in some cases learn how to live with it, because some trials we just learn to live with. Um, I, in these experiences, um, have positive growth from it. Uh, no, but I don't see it as psychological growth. I know it as spiritual growth. We grow spiritually from some difficult times. And what does it do to you? Uh, history shows that the hard times make people tighten things up, huh? cut out luxuries and focus on what's really important. So in the times of your drought, what did you find important? What did you let go of and learn to live without? Mm. And now if I can make a guess, you don't have to say it out loud, but I'll make a guess that the list of things you found important is a shorter list than the list of things you learned to live without. Mm. Now let's go back to the scripture in Job. For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground. Now I know I made it through by having a tender branch that will not cease. Let me work, on, work this out, saints. I know of some testimonies in this place, in this tabernacle, of how you made it through by having a tender branch that will not cease. The tree has been cut down. The root is waxed old in the ground. The stock has died in the ground. But you had a tender branch that will not cease. Huh. Can I make it plain? The reason to get up in the morning was gone. The ability to smile was stripped from you. You either couldn't stop eating or just could not eat at all, period. You looked in the mirror and didn't recognize yourself. You wouldn't answer the phone. Loved ones came and knocked on your door and you stayed quiet, pretending you're not there. The only thing you had left to say to God was, I'm done trying. I give up. Jeremiah thought of giving up in Jeremiah chapter 20 saying, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. Talking about God. So how much more are we than the prophet Jeremiah? If God's prophet can get to that kind of point, maybe we get to that point too. This isn't an economic drought I'm illustrating with bringing this up. This is a spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical drought. Some in your life came from trauma 
and some came from drama, but some was also from self-inflicted destruction. But of course, you know I have a bounce back to this all because the theme is when the faucet is turned off, all right? Notice that my theme isn't if the faucet gets turned off. I said when the faucet is turned off. See, by and by, we're going to face ups and downs. Uh, some of us hide it more than others, but everyone has mountains to move, giants to slay, pharaohs to serve, Babylonians to bargain with, and enemies within our gates. And we get cut down like a tree in this ongoing journey of life. But listen to this. I am not a plumber, so I can't explain why. But usually, when a faucet gets turned off, every so often, every so often, there's a drop that will fall anyway. Do you hear me? Yes. Every now and then a drop. And if you aren't paying attention, you're going to miss it. But that drop will fall. So you got to stay close to the faucet so that when that one drop falls during the drought, you can get some supply. You can get enough to just carry you through until another drop falls from the faucet. You know I'm not just talking about water now. Yes. Uh-uh. And your hard times, and it's not always about the money. Sometimes in your sorrow with a broken heart, a friend takes you out for a little fun. You didn't want to go, but they insisted a drop. Yes, the tender branch that will not cease comes in many forms. Sometimes in your depression over a dead end job, you do nothing but work and come home and sit around until it's time to go back to work. But someone met you in the parking lot at work and said, I'm taking you to just watch the birds. Maybe we're just gonna go to the lake. It didn't make sense at first, but you went and got that tranquility, a drop. Someone sent a gift box to you while you were in college, stressed out about your classes, a drop. Someone gave you a uniform to wear and said, wear it with pride, it's yours, a drop. Someone took you to all your doctor's appointments and waited to take you home afterwards, a drop. I'm saying, I am saying when the faucet is off, stay close to God, right. the source, the supply of your every need. Stay close to the leader, God's man, and listen to his words like Jesus said, come unto me and drink. If any man thirst, come unto me and drink. I'm staying close to the faucet. See, some figure that if the faucet is off, some people, when times get hard Amen. and that supply is not flowing, they'll just say, I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. Some say, it's time for me to bounce. Mm -hmm. If God is not showering us with blessings, is it worth it? Mm -hmm. Rabbi Young said there's still a kernel left yes, worth fighting for. Right. I'm saying for every drop that God has provided me in my lean times, I know it's worth it to stay close to the faucet. I got temporary employment one time when I was laid off, a drop. See, I remember my mom getting a surprise on her income tax return when she was months behind on the rent, a drop. See, right here, we had Evangelist Underwood visit and walk through this building and tell us everything to do with this building, a drop. 
See, when you, when you have no clue about what was going on with your health, someone who wasn't a doctor told you exactly what you needed to do. A drop. When you were stranded on the side of the road with that helpless feeling and a stranger took care of it, a drop. See, I know some people who are here right now because of the leaky faucet, the sink that wouldn't dry up. You made it because of the fountain of hope. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God in the highest of praise when you think about those drops that sustained you when the faucet was turned off. He creates an oasis in the driest, most deserted of places. I know that he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask for. So, just at the scent of water, we are ready to break out into praise with our cup prepared for the pouring in of the rain from heaven. Prove, God will prove you this day. If you just bake his cake first, if you just give God what is his, if you just offer up the praise that is due, he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. You won't have room enough to receive. That's why I love that song of Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 32. It says, give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass, because I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. When the faucet was off from 2020 to 2022, and we couldn't come to the tabernacle for service, we still had some small rain upon these tender herbs. We got living water through Zoom, through Google Meets, through YouTube, through phone calls, through text messages of daily affirmations, and through drive-by matzah deliveries. The church of God and saints of Christ is that tender branch that will not cease. Brothers and sisters, when the faucet is turned back on, rejoice like never before. When God is blessing you, Bless God's children. When you have your harvest season, bless the man, the land, and the plan. When you have it, know that God gave it. When you're receiving the joys that are flowing like a river, I want you to come to the tabernacle and tell it on this mountain. Prophet William S. Crowdy brought this plan of salvation to the whole world. He is the righteous branch that extends in Chief Rabbi Philip E. McNeil, Grand Father Abraham. And if you trust, if you trust in God's prophet, he will rain down great showers of blessings upon you that will make your burdens light. That he that will rain down great showers of blessings is not the man of God, but it is God. He the Lord God Almighty will rain down great showers. The prophet plants and God gives the increase. When the windows of heaven open, you will have pails of water. I'm going to bring some pails for that water when the faucet is turned back on because the leader said, Lord, turn the faucet back on. So I'm going to have some Kool-Aid pitchers for the water. Some of you know about those Kool-Aid pitchers. They can hold a whole lot of liquid. Your gallon jugs for this water, your super big gulp cups. What the big, those super, not the big gulp cup, but the super big gulp cup 
for this water and let us drink. Please, drink ye all of it. When you've been in a drought, you understand that every drop counts. You don't take any drop for granted when you've experienced the faucet being turned off. So every song that's being sung counts. Every sermon being preached counts. Every bit of tithing counts. Every prayer to the Almighty by the righteous counts. Every saint counts. Every body counts. Every bit of service counts. That's why we bless everything God gives us. Every meal you're able to get. Every meal you're able to provide for your children counts. So, Lord, turn the faucet back on. 